The dream of supersonic transport is dead in the water. The 2144 is in the bin, Concorde has become an aviation sideshow, and the American SST never even got off the ground. For all its promises, efficient supersonic passenger flight seems unattainable, but NASA hasn't thrown in the towel just yet. Hi, I'm Wren, one of the librarians at Libraro.com, and today I'm here to tell you about a time when American pilots flew a Soviet aircraft in Russian skies. In 1990, NASA launched the High Speed Civil Transport, or HSCT, project as part of their High Speed Research Program to evaluate the viability of the production of an environmentally acceptable, economically viable supersonic aircraft. The study statement of tasks called for thorough investigations in the following key technical areas. Engine specifications including emissions, fuel efficiency, service life and weight, community noise but excluding noise associated with sonic booms, aircraft range and payload, and weight and service life of airframe structures. But NASA had a bit of a problem, identifying an aircraft capable of performing these studies. Concorde, well into commercial passenger usage, did not have any spare aircraft to dedicate to research, and the American SST program never produced a flight-capable prototype aircraft. There was only one choice remaining, the Tupolev Tu-144, but that would require a partnership with Russia to convert a Tu-144 into a flying laboratory. In June of 1994, with just a touch of irony, renewable energy and green climate advocate U.S. Vice President Al Gore, along with Russian Prime Minister Viktor Chernomyrdin, signed an agreement in conjunction with the Tupolev Design Bureau and Boeing Commercial Airplane Group to team for the Tu-144 Supersonic Laboratory, designated Tu-144LL. In addition to Boeing, American engine manufacturers Pratt & Whitney and General Electric participated in engine research and NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center provided instrumentation and data processing support. After a tumultuous operational history, passenger flights for the Tu-144 were discontinued in 1978. A total of 16 Tu-144s plus one prototype were manufactured. The latter five D models were fitted with different engines, and it was one of those five models that was chosen to be retrofitted as the LL Flying Laboratory. Having never been used in commercial service, the designated airframe was retrofitted with two NK321 augmented turbofan engines, originally produced for the Tupolev Tu-160 Blackjack Bomber. A new Damien digital data collection system replaced earlier analog systems to collect airworthiness in experimental data. The aircraft was outfitted with thermocouples, pressure sensors, microphones, and skin friction gauges to measure the aerodynamic boundary layer where air interacts with the surfaces of a moving aircraft. The aircraft also carried a significant amount of additional research instrumentation and was fitted with an emergency crew escape system. The Tu-144LL was used for both flight and ground experiments, all performed at Tupolev's facility at the Zhukovsky Air Development Center near Moscow. NASA research pilots Robert Rivers, who also piloted Concorde and was the only pilot to fly and test both supersonic airliners of the Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia, and Gordon Fullerton of NASA Dryden Flight Research Center in Edwards, California, flew 12,000 miles round trip to perform two phases of flight tests. After review and down selection of 50 proposed experiments, phase one consisted of two ground engine and six flight experiments and were conducted between June of 1996 and February of 1998. The Phase 1 ground experiment studied the effect of air inlet structures on the airflow entering the engine and the effect on engine performance when supersonic shock waves rapidly change position in the engine air inlet. Flight experiments focused primarily on the supersonic impacts of aircraft handling and structure, particularly related to exterior surfaces, internal structure and structural flexibility, interior and exterior noise, and several other significant parameters. To conduct testing, the NASA pilots had to navigate language and procedural barriers, as flight manuals, checklists, and cockpit labels were all written in Cyrillic. This forced the pilots to either learn Russian quickly or rely heavily on interpreters, leading one of them to joke that it was like flying a Mach 2 aircraft using a Rosetta Stone CD. Data analysis resulted in the framing of the targeted goals of the second phase of tests conducted between September of 1998 and April of 1999. Additional instrumentation was installed by Tupolev technicians to assist in acquisition and analysis of data. A new experiment was performed to measure in-flight deflections of the wing and fuselage using American-supplied transducers and sensors to measure nose boom pressures, angle of attack, and side-slip angles with greater accuracy. 
These four and the last of the data collecting flight tests were performed in the spring of 1999. The program was considered a great success. The Joint Commission recognized the program as a model for U.S. and Russian government business partnerships in the development of advanced technologies. Fast forward to the 2020s, where the data gathered in the late 1990s is being leveraged in the development of business jets and commercial airliners. Russia's United Aircraft Corporation in Sukhoi partnered with United Arab Emirates in early 2021 to investigate the feasibility of an eight-seat business jet and a 30-seat commercial airliner. A large consortium, including NASA, Lockheed Martin, and Japan's National Air and Space Agency, or JAXA, have partnered on the Quest program primarily focused on the management and community response of quiet sonic boom designs. Other independent organizations are involved in research and development of supersonic travel, including Arion Corporation with their AS-2, Gulfstream's QSJ, Spike Aerospace S-512 Diplomat, and Boom's supersonic airliner, Overture. If you want to learn more about the full specifications of the 2144 and other SST aircraft, Visit Libero.com and make sure to watch our video, Promise of the SST, for a look into the upcoming changes in SST regulations in the United States. We value your time and love of aviation. Librero is dedicated to making sure we continue to deliver great and interesting products, so please like and subscribe to our channel and provide comments and feedback to our videos. Thank you for your time and consideration, and we hope to speak with you again soon.